Hello, good evening and welcome to News 360. My name is Solis Rose Quarty. Uh, my name is Alfred Okanse. Remember, we're live on DSTV channel 279 all across the world on 3news.com. Coming up in the bulletin this evening, Medical Director of Obinfo Hospital, Dr. Dominic Obinfo, remanded in police custody after being charged with murder. Also tonight, the National Identification Authority yet to identify specific technical problems impeding rollout of the registration exercise. And a monument to be erected in memory of Major Maxwell Mahama. And in business, MTN Ghana launches its initial public offering, that's the IPO, to raise 3.5 billion CDs. I was going to the international front where uh, rival factions in Libya agree to hold parliamentary and presidential elections on December 10. Bring you these stories plus sports and entertainment tonight here on News 360. Remember, you can join us with your thoughts. We're going in the bullets this evening with your first story tonight. The National Identification Authority, NIA, still does not know the specific technical glitch that marred the commencement of the National Identification Exercise on Monday. The authority is unsure when this glitch will be fixed, heightening concerns about the exercise that has already suffered five postponements. We think that it is fair that after we have resolved the problem, we can tell Ghanaians what the problem was. But as it stands now, we need to get all the facts together. Once that is done, we'll let the public know. So when we solve, then what are we solving if we don't know yet what the problem is? It is a process. You are dealing with technology and you would ask questions and you would get answers and you try to resolve those answers with solutions. Those solutions may work or they may not work. The National Identification Authority has suspended indefinitely the mass registration and issuance of Ghana card to Ghanaians after a rollout failure on Monday. This is the fifth time the NIA has missed an announced deadline. Officials of the Jubilee House and other key institutions, including Parliament, who had gathered at selector centers to get their national ID cards, also known as Ghana Card, were left stranded and disappointed after officers of the NIA failed to turn up for the registration exercise. The exercise was scheduled to kick off at 7 a.m., but never happened. The NIA has apologized for the fiasco amidst calls for its leadership to be held responsible for embarrassing the government. The CEO of the authority, Professor Kenatefwa, is reported to have suggested a possible sabotage. Why would anybody we, want to sabotage we, we, such a national you, project? I listened to him. He didn't say that, that we are being sabotaged. What we have to do as a responsible um, authority of state is to make sure that in addressing the current issue, because we felt that everything was set and good to go, we would explore every um, the facts we had before us. If we think, or if it turns out, that that sabotage you are talking about is what it is, we will let the public know. The acting director of corporate affairs at the National Identification Authority, Assistant Commissioner of Immigration, Francis Palm Detty, insisted the authority is in control. The issuance of the Ghana card is among the key projects the NPP government promised to execute to formalize the country's economy. Persons with the right documents who provide right answers to questions will be issued the instant Ghana card in approximately 30 minutes for free. The primary document required are a birth certificate or a valid passport. The Ghana card will replace the sectorial identity cards in circulation and become the only card to be used in transactions where identification is required as provided by law. Now, the ban on small-scale mining came into force in January 2017. This was followed by the government's anti kalamse task force, Operation Vanguard, in July in the same year. With almost a year since the coming into force of Operation Vanguard, Richard Bright Addo takes a look at the government's fight against Galamse. 
In January 2017, the government placed a ban on small-scale mining for a period of six months. The ban was, however, extended in October 2017 for another three months, which ended in January 2018. Government later extended the ban indefinitely. River bodies, farms and forest cover were destroyed because of the age-long practice of illegal mining popularly called Galamsey. Thousands of small-scale miners who were into legal mining have lost their source of income. Some of the miners then migrated to the capital Accra to seek alternative sources of livelihood. NS Nana Owusu is one of the miners who used to undertake his business in the Ashanti region. He relocated to Aquitaman in Accra. NS spoke to the news team of what life has been for him almost a year after the ban. I don't really have any major work to do. I help my parents to sell water. There is nothing really happening. Our lives are in ruins. Another miner, Atabawa, now resides at Asufa near Ofanko. He's now a taxi driver. Bawa migrated from Sandama in the Upper East region to Obuase in the Ashanti region two years ago to engage in Galamse. He told the news team after the ban, he attempted to migrate to Libya. We met at Techiman and traveled to Boku, then to Niamey to Gabi, through to Droku, which is a desert in Libya. Upon reaching Libya, we did not have any passport, so we ran back to Ghana. The government's anti-Galamsi tax force operation Vanguard, which started operation in July 2018, has at Sunday, May 27, arrested over 1,000 illegal miners, seized 101 varied weapons and more than 2,000 ammunitions. A member of the Ghana National Association of the Small Scale Miners, Maigizo, said government's promise to lift the ban soon is welcome. One thing we've been pleading for is for government to come out with specific timelines and definitive time frames. If you say soon, it's so relative, it's open. We don't know how soon the soon will be. A year on, some major river bodies hitherto affected by the illegal mining has improved and so is the reclamation program. Now, the minority in parliament is asking government to immediately withdraw a directive that it gave to Metropolitan Municipal and District Assemblies to allocate 80% of their District Assembly's common fund for its flagship projects. According to the minority, the move by government endangers the very existence of the local authorities and does not go well for development at the local level. Deputy Ranking Member of the Local Government and Rural Development Committee, Benjamin Kodo, who addressed the media, says, in government's desperation to fulfill the many promises it made to the people of Ghana, it has resorted to spending a huge chunk of the District Assembly's common fund for its flagship projects. According to Benjamin Kodo, the directive by government to metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies to allocate 80% of the district assembly's common fund for its priority projects means every assembly will be left with only 713,385 cities on the average for discretionary spending. We note further that the district assembly's common fund has also been subjected to capping under the earmark funds capping and realignment act which i earlier referred to in 2018 the fund has been capped to 1 billion 812 million 144435 ghana cities but by a true interpretation of the constitution the dacf should have been allocated more than 2.4 billion ghana cities this act is in our view also considered unconstitutional. The deputy ranking member of the Local Government and Rural Development Committee explained some of the metropolitan municipal and district assemblies solely depend on the district assemblies common fund to survive due to the limited flow in internally generated funds. 
Benjamin Kodo added, such districts will therefore be heavily exposed financially and could be heading for stagnation or even collapse. It has become notorious for government to run to the DACF to prey on its resources whenever it needs money for anything extra budget. We believe, in conclusion, that our decentralization as a, a fundamental component of our democracy can be deepened when the decentralized units are strengthened. The minority group urged government to explore and find other means of funding its flagship programs. We know the President, His Excellency, is a 12 years member of this house. The administrator for this assembly common fund is an eight years member of this house. Mm. The minister for local government is a city member of this house. The deputies are all city members of this house. Most of them are lawyers and they know the law. So if a lawyer is breaching the law, do you think that it is just out of convenience? No! Something is forcing the lawyer to breach the law. May 29, 2017 will remain a dark day in the annals of Ghana's history. A soldier was brutally murdered by citizens whom he had vowed to protect even against external aggression. Komla Kluche recaps events that led to his death on that fateful day. His death shook the nation, not because it was the first case of lynching, but because he was clear he was innocent. Major Max Mahama was reported to be leading the contingent of soldiers based in the Upper Denture West constituency. His exact mission? To protect small-scale mining. With the top hierarchy of the military shocked and shaken, deployed dozens of its men in uniform into the area of New Obuase. Subsequently, a swoop was conducted that sent the whole village mute, becoming a ghost town. The body of the slain soldier was airlifted after the top hierarchy of the military visited the area. Subsequently, a district chief executive was fired for talking too much. The truth is one. Kamala, I'm a district chief executive. You expect that if probably I've seen a military man or somebody dressed in a military uniform, I assume that he's here in my district. An SOS ignited for the arrest of an assemblyman who went into hiding two days after the police alleged he failed to come to the rescue of the soldier. Some 50 suspects were arrested and put before court, subsequently cut down to 14. An angered military demanded to visit mayhem on the town of New Obuase. <laughs> President Kufuado subsequently visited the town and assured justice will be sought for the slain soldier. When you are born, you know, it was one in a year, yeah, and rather than one day, you are coming. What can I do for you? Kumla Kluche, TV3 News. New Boise. Well, Kamala spent some seven days in New Boise, previously Dentro Boise, and enrollment in schools in the infamous New Boise town of the central region is yet to pick up after parents withdrew the awards following the killing of Major Maxwell Mahama. Teachers in the Roman Catholic Basic School are demanding clinical psychologists be sent to psych pupils who are still terrified. With the events. Kamala Kluche has more. At 7 a.m., the lower primary class of the Roman Catholic School in New Obuasi rehearsed in previous days' lessons before gathering for assembly. of May 29, 2017. 
This was an escape route for the teachers. This forest became a safe haven for them. It was the only escape route and they lamented so badly of neglect by higher authorities within the educational setup within the district. The town went dead after the raid. Terrified, insecure, these teachers regret the pupils have largely been affected. At that particular time, examination was not able to be conducted because, um, but then we have to be very sincere and fair to ourselves. Nothing had been, enough had not been taught by then, so we were not able to conduct examination. And looking at the effect of not, able, not being able to conduct examination at that time, it was, it was third term. And the third term is the term that we have to take decisions about the children as to whether to promote uh, which of them and to repeat with them. But because no formal ex examination was being conducted, we were not in position to uh, repeat and promote. But we were forced to promote all the students, which really affected the less academic work. It was around 500 to 600. But uh, later on, it reduced drastically to 300. But now, as I'm talking, it is gradually increasing to around 450, 460 thereabout. So currently, we are having 460 out of the um, 300, which was at actually reduced to. Evans Quatin has been a teacher in the school for over six years. The memories are still fresh and the teachers are hurting, they say. The angriness came where teachers were being beaten, but no response came from the uh, directorate. And we're here waiting to hear something from them, but they never show up. Psychologically, emotionally, we're down. Basic school pupils are horrified. Do you still think about it now? Yes, I still think about it. Why do you think about it? Because when I went to the time yesterday, I heard that they said the soldiers will come here because it's a, one year later, so they will come here. So I'm still afraid. And I'm a man born person. I've killed him one day. Without nothing, I'll not do anything. And it affects and learning about three weeks. I was informed to, we don't learn anything. So all the topics, we are not able to contract it. What advice do you have for the elderly ones and even the young ones, everybody in the community? I will advise them that when they see somebody, they don't took them as a stranger, but they have to approach him or her and ask him some questions. So where from you? Why do you come to here? Teachers in the town have expressed their displeasure and outrage over how they claim they were let down in the midst of the soup. Psychologically, when incidents of such nature happen, it is expected that the children have to be left to rest somewhere so that they will be able to uh, lease their mind or they will be able to um, come out of the stress that they have gone through. So their mind to be a state that will be able to learn and understand. Because as at that time they were panicking and people were going through a whole lot of stress. And I don't think psychologically every human being will be in position to stay. The Upper Danger West Assembly is bent on working with stakeholders to raise the dent on the community. It is not a bad idea to have a psychologist or any other, but I'm aware that some the first event that went on at that place was when one reverend minister came like a, some form of thanksgiving crusade at New Obwase. And for the psychologists and other things, the last time that I was talking to MP, I mentioned that issue. And we are still looking at possibility of not even the whole community, but at least those who were freed. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, New Obwase. 
Now, President Kufuado has presented 50,000 CDs from his personal account to the Major Mahama Trust Fund. Now, part of the amount is to be used in catering for the family of the soldier. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia announced this during the swearing-in of the seven-member governing board for the Major Mahama Trust Fund in Accra. Dr. Muhammad Baumia was elated about the 50,000 CD presentation by the president of Kufuado. The amount is to complement a seed money of 500,000 CDs, which has been already established. The vice president said other donations will also be raised from parliament to grow the trust fund. Money is approved by parliament, grant donations and voluntary contributions. Money is accrued from investments by the Board of Trustees, money is lawfully payable to the Trust Fund and money that the Board of Trustees in consultation with the Minister responsible for finance. Minister of Defence, Dominic Initiu, who received the amount loaded a contribution of President Ekufuado. This is the check His Excellency the President has donated as part of his pledge, the 50000 from his personal account. And I do hope that it will spare Ghanaians to start donating to cater for the young family. Later, the Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Baumia, swore in the seven-member governing board for the Trust Fund. He implored members to facilitate the construction of a monument and other effigies in memory of the late soldier. The country shall also erect a monument near Burma Camp in his honor, which will also serve as a constant reminder to all Ghanaians not to indulge in su such acts of shame and dishonor again. The late Major Muhammad died at Denchobwase in the central region. Well, the quest to take the law into one's hands by meting out instant justice or mob action has always been condemned by many. This way of seeking justice has cost the lives of many, including Major Maxwell Adam Mahama, who was on official duty in Denchobwase in the central region. To remind Ghanaians on the need to stay away from the act, the government through the Ghana Armed Forces has cut sword to erect a monument in memory of the slain soldier. Here's a report by Godfrey Tanam. Instant justice, otherwise known as mob action, is a common phenomenon in Ghana which affects the rule of law and the democracy practice in the country. Mob action takes varied forms such as lynching suspected robbers to death butchering suspected criminals, humiliating suspects by stripping them naked to the stand of setting others ablaze. Exactly a year ago, on Monday, May 29, 2017, Major Maxwell Adam Mahama was brutally lynched by a mob at Dinshu Obuasi, now New Obuasi in the central region. After this barbaric act, many condemned what has come to be known as a part of the culture of the people. One year on, the government's promise to erect a monument in memory of the late Adam Mahama has been realized with a sword cutting ceremony at Airport Hills in Accra. The monument, which will be erected at the Airport Hills roundabout, signifies the need to end mob justice and also depicting the bravery of the slain soldier. At the ceremony, the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Obed Aqua, emphasized the need for Ghanaians to embrace the justice system instituted by the Constitution instead of resorting to mob action. The government also announced plans for the establishment of the Major Mahama Trust Fund, which was inaugurated this morning. It is hoped that the monument, when completed, will remind Ghanaians of the need to wage a serious campaign against mob action and instant justice. The Minister for Defense, Dominic Nituwu, said, the act of meting out mob action against suspects defines the uncivilized nature of the said society. Though the erection of the statue will be in fulfillment of the promise made by the government, it will go far beyond the memory of an individual to serve as a reminder to the present and the future generations that mob justice, irrespective of the instigating circumstances, should not be condoned or tolerated in any civilized society. 
The upper part of the 20-feet monument will depict the bravery of Major Maxwell Mahama. The middle part signifies the mob action against him, leading to his death, whilst the landscape portrays the soothing and calm atmosphere of the environment. Godfrey Tanam, TV3 News, Airport Hills, Accra. Well, on MTN Video Report this evening, our citizen journalist Ayugo Madi Yahaya reports on an abandoned chips compound at Nsuta Kwaman district in the Ashanti region. This is a chips compound that was constructed by the formal administration for more than one and a half year now. No health personnel has been employed and the place is currently bushy. The community is over a population of about 200 to 300. The people have left with no any other option but to travel 30 to 35 kilometers before they can access health care. Reporting from Nsuta Kwamai District, Dauda in Ashanti region, my name is Ayungoma Di Yahaya. Or well, you can also send your video via WhatsApp number 0551-433-044. The number again is 0551-433-044. You're still watching News 360. We'll be right back with some more news updates. Do stay. Welcome back to News 360. Let's do some business news now. And a new report released by the World Bank shows that 7,310,000 people in Ghana do not have any form of financial account. This means that more than 7 million Ghanaians do not have either a mobile money account or bank account to electronically receive and transfer money. There is more in the following report. According to the reports titled Gains in Financial Inclusion, Gains for Sustainable World, this 7.3 million Ghanaians may not be significantly contributing to the economy since financial inclusion is an important factor in economic development. The effect, according to the reports, is that such people are mostly excluded from benefits of financial inclusion, such as receiving and transferring money easily, getting an insurance, starting and expanding businesses, investing in education or health, managing risk and weather financial shocks. The report explained that financial inclusion translates into many other potential development benefits, especially from the use of digital financial services, including mobile money services, payment cards and other financial technology applications. Overall, the research showed that 1.7 billion people across the world did not have financial accounts. Financial inclusion has emerged as a critical development challenge and is a hot topic among policymakers, development practitioners, and the private sector. The foundation of financial inclusion is woven into seven of the 17 sustainable development goals. According to the latest Findex data, a lot of progress has been made over the past few years towards extending financial access and the number of unbanked adults has fallen to 1.7 billion. The number of unbanked people continues to fall, even when accounting for population growth. MTN Ghana has launched its initial public offering, that's the IPO, in Accra, seeking to raise 3.5 billion CDs. Now, the offer, which opened from today, May 29, is expected to end on July 31, 2018. MTN Ghana is making a public offering of up to 35% of its equity through the offer and the listing. The move is in fulfillment of regulatory obligation regarding the purchase of one of the 4G Spectrum licenses in 2015. MTN Ghana is issuing 4.6 billion shares at 75 pesos per share. It has pegged the minimum amount to be raised under the offer at 347 million cities. CEO of MTN Ghana, Ebenezer Chum Asante, said since 2013, MTN has built a track record of translating significant investment into strong performance. This day marks the beginning of a rare and exciting opportunity for Ghanaians to invest in Ghana's best. 
When we saw the light, others did not believe that it is possible for our customers to transact from their phone. We invested heavily behind mobile financial services. For the first three years, we actually ran at significant loss. So the 93% market share came out of extra, extra hard work. Managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Kofi Yamwa was delighted the telco sector is finally having a representation on the exchange. The service sector is the biggest in our economy. And within that sector, the telecom and information technology is fast and growing. But unfortunately, that sector is not represented on the exchange. And if we have to represent it, then the better way to do it is to have the leader of that sector coming on stream. And that is MTN Ghana coming on board. The investing public can buy shares through a physical application form from selected banks and receiving agents. They offer website at mtngarnashares.com and also through mobile money by dialing star 170 hash. This innovation, as Mr. Ebenezer Asante said earlier, is quite exciting because it's the first time ever anywhere in the world that this is being used and it's open to individual applicants. The offer, which begins today, May 29, is expected to end July 31, 2018 and possibly list on the Ghana Stock Exchange on September 5, 2018. MTN Ghana is the leading provider of mobile telecommunication services in Ghana. The company has over 17 million subscribers with a market share of approximately 55.1% as of December 2017. Everywhere you go. Now, Goldfields Ghana has launched its year-long silver anniversary celebrations in Accra, addressing stakeholders at the launch. The executive vice president of West Africa, Alfred Baku, expressed the company's resolve to contribute to national development through its community development projects and programs. The company, since its establishment in 1993, has made giant strides in the mining sector and also contributed to the development of the country. The year-long celebration will focus on rewarding loyal workers of the company and also see the company undertake developmental projects in some of the mining communities in the country. The executive vice president of Goldfields West Africa, Alfred Baku, highlighted some of the development projects that the firm has embarked on in the previous years, which he says has touched the lives of people. We have actually just uh, entered into a JV with Asanko, and we believe that uh, that is going to actually increase uh, our footprint in Ghana, and therefore we'll be able to give more in terms of uh, employment opportunities give more in terms of royalties and corporate taxes, give more back to the host communities as well. According to him, the company has spent approximately $44 million in communities, providing access to potable water, supporting local farmers, putting up health and educational facilities, training community youth, building critical infrastructure, and extending bursaries and scholarships to bright but needy children. At Takwa, we exceeded our uh, target or budget, and at Daman, we exceeded our target or budget in terms of production, in terms of cost, in terms of financials. So uh, we have a, a very good year ahead of ourselves. He commended present and past workers of the company for their efforts in making Goldfields Ghana the nation's premier mining firm. Well, that's it for business news this evening. For more news updates, do log on to our website, www.3news.com. Over to you, Alfred, for more news updates. Okay. Thank you, Solis. We're going to some more stories. An Accra District Court has remanded medical doctor of Obingfo Hospital, Dominic Obing, and his cleaner, Edward Amponsa, to two weeks in police custody after being charged with murder. The presiding judge, Ifwasaki, denied the accused person bail and directed his lawyers to the High Court as she has no jurisdiction to grant him bail. The two accused persons are being held in police custody for the police to further investigate the matter. 
though the plea of the accused persons has not been taken. Dr. Bain was charged with murder with his cleaner, Edward Amponsa, charged with impersonation. Detective Chief Inspector Simon Apiosonu told the court if he is granted bail, he would interfere with investigations. Lawyer for the accused persons, Jonathan Jaisu, told the court the facts presented by prosecution do not support the charges leveled against his client. He prayed the court to grant his client bail as the first accused person is a qualified medical doctor who served many Ghanaians. Jonathan Jaisu said his client has not been well since his arrest, pleading with the court to order the prosecution to transfer him to a different hospital apart from the police hospital. Sitting continues on June 12. You're still watching News 360. We'll be back with some more. Do stay. Welcome back and now to some international news where rival factions in Libya have agreed to hold parliamentary and presidential elections on 10th December. The four groups meeting in the French capital, Paris, also agreed to adopt the necessary laws by mid-September. French President Emmanuel Macron described the accord as historic and an essential step towards reconciliation. Libya has been in a state of lawlessness since the toppling and killing of Colonel Muammar Gaddafi in 2011. Libya is now controlled by disparate armed groups and fighting is continuing in the east and south of the country. European leaders see stabilizing Libya as key to tackling jihadist threats and migration from the country, which has become a departure point for hundreds of thousands of Africans trying to reach Europe. Representatives from EU countries, the United States and regional neighbors were also at the meeting hosted by the French president. We'll be back with some entertainment news. Do stay. Hello there and good evening. Let's do some entertainment news here on News 360. We'll, we'll stay with music today and we'll start with the UK-based Ghanaian music duo Reggie and Boli. They are in Ghana to celebrate the Queen's 92nd birthday on the invitation of the British High Commission. The 2015 X Factor first to run up will seize the opportunity to promote their newly released song, Wine Up. The duo also intends to sign and groom talents from Ghana. <laughs> And we're here to celebrate the Queen's birthday with the British High Commission. So we're really privileged to be invited by the British High Commissioner himself, Mr. Ian Walker. And that's what we're here for today. Reggie and Bowley's newly released song, Wine Up, is gaining momentum in Ghana. The acclaimed group will be embarking on a promotion tour to endear the song to fans. We're going to be around to create awareness for us. Well. It's a new wave that is going on, so we've just jumped on a wave. It's called Wine Up, it's doing great. So as we're here, we're going to take the opportunity to go around and make the people know that we've dropped something for them. And the music scene is back here in Ghana. It's bubbling. A lot of hate people are doing very well. And any arrangements to do one or two works before you, you fly back. Definitely touching down here, we're going to make sure we link up with some of our artist friends and see if we can, you know, cook something together. Why not? Yeah. I mean, we, we've got loads of favorite artists, so definitely, you know, something nice. I know. Yeah, I know. We'll, yeah. We'll hit one or two people up and see, you know. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep it as a top stuff. secret. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie and Bowley also hinted of plans to scout for homegrown talent and project them internationally. Once you make it big, you know, a lot of people who look up to you, you have people that you're helping to come up. Yeah, I mean, um, we've established our own record label back in the UK and we've signed our first artist, um, she's called Lauren Murray, who is doing amazing. And what we intend to do is also make sure we set up in Ghana as well to make sure we, we will be able to pick up one or two artists and, you know, groom them up, make sure they get the maximum worldwide exposure. So definitely some Ghanaian talent. We've, we've said that over the past year, but we'll make sure we make it happen. And so back here in Ghana, are there any 
acts that you have spotted? Yeah, there are loads of acts, but what happens is that, you know, as, as, as businessmen, we sit down with the team. When we pick a person, the team are going to also scrutinize and say that, yeah, we think this is the right person to do. So, yeah, we're going to have people in mind, but then everyone has to sit on the board and be like, okay, yeah, we agree, let's go, and then we'll do it. So, hopefully. Just trying to remember any name, like new artists, um, you know, like new I really like that, um, what's his name, Article 1 guy? Article 1, yeah, Article one. He's, he's really good, he's really good. Patapai is shutting down the whole <laughs> <basically. laughs> Yeah, man, yeah, he's doing amazing. I mean, even in the UK, among the Afrobeats community, he's really, you know, coming up, which is really good. Um, he's very authentic. And Show me the needles, the wiggle and shake and rebound. Anything more, find it, find it, find it. The group was formed in 2012, then known as Men on Point, placing first runners-up at the 2015 X Factor show. But as individual artists, Reggie Zippy released three songs in 2006, namely Virgin, For Sale and Adoma. In 2004, Bolly also had a hit single called You May Kiss the Bride. You won't kiss the bride, right? Brami, brebo, we are siyami, humi, humano, sunyina, ibi da cheke, no? Odami, don't well, I guess there's some good news for you upcoming artists out there. Make sure that you take advantage of this opportunity whilst they're still in town. Away from that, but still staying with music. Ace High Life musician and songwriter Jedi Blay Ambule has been honored for his achievement and outstanding contribution towards the growth of the Ghanaian music industry. <laughs> Starting his career in the mid-60s, Ambule rose to fame following the release of his debut album titled Simigwado, done in 1973. At age 71, Ambule has 32 albums to his credit. Aside producing authentic high-life hits to entertain, the Trailblazer has mentored and continued to inspire many musicians. The 2018 Dinner with the Stars recognized the outstanding musician for his achievements. It's a wonderful feeling, man. Doing something that you know that you're doing something impacting what you have or the talent that God has given to you, you're impacting that. But for people to be able to recognize that and award you and all that, I think it's a great feeling. Patrons, including his colleague musicians, applauded him for the feat. He deserved this award. I mean, it's, it's long overdue. The man is a living legend. You know, he's still performing, he's still writing. And that's the ever young Jedi Blay Amberley. That's about it for entertainment. You can catch me on the Urban Blend on 3FM 92.7 tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, we want to Hi, say Alfred. thank you yeah. for staying with us here on News 360. My name is Alfred Kanti. And I'm Solis Rose Corte. Have a good evening. Sadia is up next.